My dream comes true, ladies and gentlemen, I get a private tour of the largest coral reef aquariums here in Europe. Together with Pascal, we look behind the scenes of this 8 million liter aquarium. We have, uh, I think at the moment, 12 people diving. Uh, Two and a half kilogram yeah, calcium we, we a day. Do, we do 25 kilo of magnesium chloride a week. Hello and welcome to Sea Friendly Reef and to your new video here on that little channel. Next to me is one of the biggest reef tank we can find here in Europe and what we are going to see also on this day is the biggest coral reef in whole Europe. So you can be excited, let's go! Okay, so this whole tank is about 32 meters long, about 10 meters deep. We've got some living sharks in it. We've got some smaller coral reefs, but these are no living corals. So the fish have some hiding places and we've got a, a, a boat, which isn't a steel boat. So this is all plastic, very interesting, because you cannot sink all the steel into that tank because of the water parameters. Right now we are in a tunnel aquarium which has much more than 1 million liters and we see a lot of eagle rays swimming around us. The biggest female has a weight of 75 kilogram and they can breed here some of these species, very interesting. So they have more than 50 tank bred eagle rays giving to other aquariums in whole Europe. Now we are standing in front of a 750,000 liter reef aquarium with a lot of tanks, with a lot of smaller fish. We see also some tank bred chromies, very interesting. And we've got some uh, Bengal cardinal fish. So this is a beautiful biotope aquarium in my opinion. We have some uh, spaces for all the tanks so that they all can be separated. <laughs> Next to me is Pascal, and Pascal is one of the main aquarists here in Burger Zoo in the Netherlands. If you want to, you can tell us a little bit about the maintenance of such a huge system. We run uh, with a team of 10 people, and it's important to say that uh, everybody has his own task. So you have like a weekly task. Some, uh, one person is feeding the fish, uh, one person is doing all the, the water side of things, uh, measuring, uh, refilling, filling. One person is cleaning, just normal cleaning jobs. Okay. So the uh, diver, for example, we've seen today? Yeah, but it's a different thing. And we have one person doing quarantine. Ah. So these are like the, the four main uh, groups of, uh, of uh, labor we do. And next to that, we have like maintenance, a lot of maintenance. We also have a lab. We do mm -hmm. a laboratory work. We have, uh, I think at the moment, 12 people diving, also from uh, different parts of the zoo. So not everybody that works in the aquarium dives. The feeding is uh, a daily task. So you start preparing food and you do that for a whole day. So feeding, cleaning, everything. We all know this from at home. If you've got a little glass or acrylic tank, yeah. 
and you have to clean your windows yeah. a few times a week yeah. and you've got so huge glass fronts, acrylic yeah. fronts, uh, you, you need so much time to, to maintenance that. Yeah. Uh, the diving, we uh, do three dives a week in this tank. Uh, we try to clean the windows twice a week. That's the bare That's, minimum. It takes we, a lot if, of time. If we do only one time a week, the windows become too, uh, yeah. too green for the visitors. Yeah. So we have to clean them twice a week. Do you know how much lighting we've got over here? Uh, we used to run 70,000 watts of metal 70, halide. 70,000 yeah. watts. But it's less. We are switching to to uh, LEDs. Ah, okay. What do you uh, have here? Not everything, but we, ah, we, I've seen we, some we have LED some, spots uh, here. some spots here. We have a larger spot here, but we're actually still trying. So we're really slowly uh, starting to use uh, LED and uh, just see how the coral react. And from there, we will, uh, we will upgrade. How many skimmers do you have here? Ah, good question. Nice. Uh, I don't know by heart. But many. I think about 20. Uh, well, I should have counted it, but I don't know. From Doesn't a, matter. From no. You have to clean them and point. Yeah, we clean. <laughs> yeah well, let's go upstairs. Have yeah. a look. These are 20 years old. I don't know the flow. I think it's about 30,000 liter an hour. What for kind of pumps are you using here? We use a, a specific uh, pool pump. Pool it's, pumps? It's a pool pump, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. They have automatic cleaning. Yeah, I see it here, it's, yeah. Uh, they have a cleaning on timer and we can clean them by hand. Just by opening a valve. Ah, uh, okay, and then we've and got then some osmosis to, uh, water clean. and then it flutes out. Yeah, this is no osmosis water. We have different types of water, but this is uh, a mixture of sourced water and tap water. Ah, okay. We have to wash them by hand, of course, but you know, we're always uh, short in time, so. <laughs> yeah. And it's nice. not the nicest job. And you have not only one. <laughs> I, no, we have, I think, 17 or 18. Yeah. What do you want to see, laboratory or dozing? Um, laboratory. I don't know if we need it because we have the water parameters in our interview. Yeah. Just a normal uh, visitor's uh, tour. Yes, yeah. very good. Okay. Because I am a normal visitor. You are, um, yes. Completely Normally normal. we have uh, salt here, a yeah. lot of salt, and we, uh, we uh, store it here. But now we're uh, almost out of salt. We have four bags left. Okay. Well, four pallets. You know the brand? I know the brand. Yeah, you know the brand. Tobik Marine, what was your experience with that salt? Yeah, we've been using it since the start. Since it's 20 a, years. It's a mix for a public aquaria. One bag is 500 kilo. We mix... And uh, this is your salt water mixing station? Yeah, this, uh, we have a big pump running on this system. Yeah. And we have under, underground tanks. These are uh, way below. We have underground tanks where we collect the water. These tanks are about uh, 65,000 liter. You are just using this for mixing? It will dissolve in here in stages yeah. because it's actually too much salt for this tank, but it will dissolve slowly. We will mix 2,000 kilos in here and then uh, in a, a day or something, it's completely uh, mixed downstairs in the bigger tanks. And yeah. uh, what about water change? Of course, we do water change every day, but every day, not that many. About how much? Uh, the protein uh, how skimmers, percent? they, uh, of course, you lose some water through mm -hmm. protein skimmers. And we run the system in such a way that we only uh, use uh, reef water, the coral reef. So the coral reef has priority. And we recycle the coral reef water to fill the, all the other tanks, the ah. fish tanks. Mm -hmm. I think on a daily basis, it's about 3,000 uh, to 4,000 liters. Ah. These are different salts. Huh? So we have the strontium, we have nitrate, the bicarbonates, the carbonates. Are you dosing completely magnesium, with salt? Calcium, yeah. Ah. In the reef tank, we do about two and a half kilo calcium chloride pure. So pure calcium a day. Wow, and, uh, two and a half kilogram yeah, we, calcium we a day. Do, we do 25 kilo of magnesium chloride a week. <laughs> yeah, the amounts are insane. Wow. And we still run a calcium reactor. So, and we want to stop with the calcium reactor because yeah. of the CO2. Um, so it will be even more than that. Wow. Yeah. So we okay. replenish a lot of, uh, of the, the minerals by salt. So this we make our own solution. So normally uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you buy it and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just in a pot, but okay. we mix our own. So this is your dosing system? This is part of our dosing part system. Part of our, the yeah. dosing system. Yeah. Crazy. How yeah. old is the tank? It's running for about 20 years now. So we have also 
uh, animals inside which are 20 years old. Yeah, it, yeah. that can be, yeah. yeah. But I think uh, the smaller fish, not all of them become 20 years old. Yeah. But many of the fish uh, we have around here are, have been here for a very long time. Okay. 10, 15 years maybe. You've got an own laboratory here. Yeah, um, we have. Do you've got some information about water parameters? Because I think yeah, sure. this is very interesting in such a huge system because it is very stable, isn't it? If you've got so much water, yeah. little things do not change a lot. No, that's, uh, that's true. Yeah. Especially for the very large tank, like yeah. the, the shark tank, everything goes very slowly. But you have to act in time. So if you see values increasing, you yeah. do have to act. Because if you don't act, it will keep increasing. Do you know the KH or the phosphate? Uh, level? Yeah, I don't measure in, uh, in the German uh, KH, uh, but uh, it's about 150 milligrams per liter of okay. calcium carbonate. So it's a 3.0 milli equivalent per okay. liter. Um, and I think that's about 8.4. And, and phosphate? Phosphate is uh, always near zero in this tank. Near we're, zero. Al we're always low in phosphate. But that's what we measure in the water. Huh? So it doesn't mm -hmm. say that the phosphate is zero, but we measure zero in the water or near zero. And the nitrates at the moment, we're I think somewhere about 0.10 milligram per liter up to 0.8. That's about uh, what we run. Mm -hmm. But we've been low in, uh, in nutrients at the moment. And you've got less fish stock here. So yeah, yeah. only so a few fish. It's, it's not that many. We don't have too many tanks. So this is the, the larger quarantine system. Mm -hmm. We have other, some bigger tanks for uh, larger species like the, the rays, or young eagle rays when they're born. We bring them upstairs, um, we learn them uh, to feed from hand. Mm -hmm. If they're old enough and uh, the growth is, uh, is good, then we give them to other zoos. Nice. So this is mainly for the animals we have that are born, we keep them in here. And sometimes uh, we quarantine animals that are new, but we don't get that many new animals. Mm -hmm. In the shark tank or in the, in the coral reef, are you also dosing some medicine? No. S nothing? No. The amount of medicine you need for that water volume is, uh, is crazy. We rather take the fish out and uh, treat them upstairs mm -hmm. than dose a whole system. Nitrate filter? Yeah. So uh, you have, of course, uh, nitrification. Yeah. And that's uh, with oxygen, but you also have denitrification. Mm -hmm. And that's without oxygen. So in this filter, we create uh, an atmosphere with very little oxygen and we feed the bacteria uh, a carbon source. In this case, it's uh, methanol. Mm. Um, so the nitrate will be, uh, eventually will become a nitrogen gas. And on which tank this is this included? This is the, the tank with the rays, the ah, tunnel. Okay. okay. Yeah. For keeping the nitrate level down. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because we do so little water change, yeah. we need to keep the nitrates down. If you have a small tank at home, you will have the same problem. Eh? You will get a nitrate buildup. Yeah. Uh, but we are we we are not in a position to use that much water, so yeah. we have to get a way to reduce nitrates, and this mm. is our way to reduce nitrates. And we also have a phosphate filtration. Yeah. Of course. It's the so same so thing. So uh, abs absorber. Yeah. Or, okay. We use uh, iron chloride. Ah, okay. So uh, yeah, it's a bit difficult to see, maybe and that, that one is better. But it's uh, the same as they do in the hobby. Eh? They use uh, lanthanum. Yeah. You've heard of that, like yeah. the phosphate reduces. It's mostly based on uh, lanthanum. Ah. Uh, and you can see a bit of flux here. So this is a very slow flow. Mm -hmm. And we add with the dosing pumps. We have different types of dosing pumps, but it's a dosing pump. We add uh, iron chloride. Mm -hmm. And uh, iron uh, binds the phosphate, and mm -hmm. then you get a, a precipitation. How do you call it? It, it becomes a flock. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The yeah. flock we can uh, wash away. When it comes to water change, we use, for example, uh, the fresh water. Yeah. It's in a big tank with a pump, and it pumps back into the tank. But it pumps it through this building, and on that line we have taps everywhere. So yeah. I, for example, I have here a tap of osmosis water. So this is, uh, we have downstairs, we have main tanks with osmosis water. We prepare every night. Uh, and if I want to fill a tank, I open up the, the safeties and I can fill the tanks. Yeah, yeah. And we have it for salt and for osmosis. Yeah. And we have, uh, it's a metering system. So yeah. it says how much water, uh, it says uh, 158,100 yeah. liters okay. of osmosis water this year. 
Okay, okay, okay. So anyway. it's not a, a level controller. It's just saying you how much yeah. uh, liter you yeah. you are. It's like a little propeller mm -hmm. in, uh, ah, okay. in the pipe, just and it counts uh, how much rotation, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you can uh, put uh, the data in, and then it will give an estimation because it's not a. Yeah. But it's an estimation of how much water. This is for the person who uh, who has to do the water technique. Yeah. We have an estimate of the daily uh, evaporation. So this 700 liter is daily evaporation in the, the reef tank. What a beautiful day in the Burger Zoo, and it was nice to see that all the fish are loving the sea-friendly reef food. If you are interested in that, check the description. There you can find every information. And yeah, what was your favorite part of the zoo? Feel free to write it down in the comments. Pascal, thank you very, very much for fulfilling me that dream to have a look behind that beautiful system today. No thank problem. you for answering all these questions. So for you, if you are in Europe, if you are in the Netherlands, you have to come here. Thanks a lot for watching and see you again next week. <laughs>